brand new episode of the Riff Rundown with my friends at Fishman. So, so happy you guys are here for a brand new episode. This is going to be a lot of fun today. So we're going to be learning Rolling in the Deep by Adele. One of my favorite tunes, one of my favorite artists. She's just so awesome and seems super cool and someone that would just be super fun to chat with uh, at a party. She seems just awesome. So really, really looking forward to teaching you guys how to play this one today. Have your acoustic guitar in standard tuning. So what we're gonna do here, and this is something I haven't done before here on the Riff Rundown, so you guys are lucky today. I'm gonna be teaching it for the first half hour. I'm gonna teach it as it is played on the record when it's played live. Then what I'm gonna do is for the second half of the lesson, have your capo handy. Cause what we're gonna do here is we're gonna play it for those of you or maybe more my beginners, cause this whole song is bar chords, right? So I'm gonna do a version with the capo for the second half for my beginners watching today so that you can still play it. It's still gonna sound great, but it's gonna be a capoed version. And I encourage you guys stick around for both versions. It's always good to know both ways how to, you know, how to play tunes. It's a lot of fun. It's, it's always a good time to using a capo. So before we get started here, you know, I always like to ask a question. So folks, let me know where you are tuning in from and your favorite vocalist. I don't care the genre. So where you're tuning in from and your favorite vocalist. All right. So I want to know, and before we get started with the lesson, I'll be reading off where you guys are tuning in from too. So I thank you so, so much for being here. So acoustic guitar, standard tuning, rolling in the deep by Adele. Here we go. go lots of bar chords clearly we're seeing a lot of bar chords it's good exercise and I'm seeing already getting in the messages from everybody thank you so much for 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 including or for going in the chat this is great I'm glad good Bill who's afraid of bar chords not me I love it don't be scared of them because they are really great when they're used properly oh they sound so so good so for the first half we're gonna be learning this version for the second half, my beginners, if the power chords and the bar chords are just a little too much, don't worry. We're going to do a capoed version. We're going to do it on the second fret, so have it ready. 
So let's go ahead and start it here. Now, what's so, so cool about this song, not a lot of chords, right? But it's all about the peaks and valleys and the groove of this song that is just so, so cool. So let's go ahead and talk about the intro. It's one chord, so it's gonna be a B5 chord, or like a B power chord. So what does this mean? Well, it looks like this, right? Seventh fret. This power chord, all it includes is ones and fives, okay? So there's two ones and a five, so I'm gonna show you where they are. So for this B5 chord, what we're gonna do here, first finger, okay? We're gonna bar it across all six strings on the seventh fret of that E string. Our B root is right here on that seventh fret of the E string, okay? So press firmly, okay? Now what we're gonna do here, your third finger, place that on the F sharp, it's gonna be ninth fret of the A string, that is our five. So we have the B is our one, and this F sharp is our five, okay? Now, your fourth finger, we're gonna tuck that underneath, ninth fret of the D string, that's your other B. So notice how they sound the same. Right, they're octaves. And then the F sharp. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna strum downwards and we're gonna do eight of them. But there's something very interesting happening. I only want you to play those top three strings, the E, A, and D, okay? That's all we want. If we were to play everything, it would be a B minor chord. We're not playing that today. We're just playing the power chord version. Now, your thumb, notice how you cannot see my thumb up here, okay? For us to get really good, strong power chords and bar chords in general, okay? We want that thumb in the middle of the neck. We want it squeezing through, pressing through the back of the neck. So a good place, right? Right where the neck is starting to, right where it has a, you know, necks have like a C shape. Right where it's starting to curl, right? Right at the tip of that bend is where I want your thumb. Now it's gonna be a slight angle, so think of it as it's kind of pointing towards this, this tuning knob right here, okay? So notice how you cannot see my thumb. Watch what happens when my thumb goes up. See how it makes it, it condenses the chord. It's gonna make playing bar chords or power chords that much harder. So look at when I open up, right? My hand opens up when I'm placing my thumb in the correct place. See how the, the weight is more evenly distributed. And that's how we get a stronger power chord, okay? So keep that thumb. I don't wanna see your thumb anywhere up here, okay? So keep it towards the middle. We don't wanna see it. Okay, it's acting as that really nice foundation for the rest of the chord so everything sounds nice and clear, okay? So I just wanted to, I, I wanted to talk about that. So there we go, there's that B5. Now what we're gonna do here, notice how it's palm muted. It doesn't sound like this. That we don't want. We want to mute, okay? So this part of your hand here, the heel of the hand, the strumming hand, okay? So this part here, Keep it perpendicular, right, with the saddle. So you're gonna go like this. Now, place it right there. I'm just in front of the saddle, okay? You can kind of see it right there. See how I'm not covering it, I'm just in front. Now we want it to sound like this, and I'm not gonna play the chord yet. That's how we want it to sound. We don't want it to, we don't want it to be open. We want it to be thuddy, that's a good thing. So when we add the chord, allows that kind of sound, which is really great. Okay, so just like that. So let's go ahead and do this again. So just like that, all right? So that's what we want to do there. Now, from here, we go to the F sharp five. So your first finger placing it on the second fret of that E string, that's your F sharp, your third finger should be on the fourth fret of the A string, okay? That's gonna be your C sharp. Your fourth finger is going to be on the other F sharp that's located on the fourth fret of the D string. Just like that, okay? So here we go. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so just like that. And 
that F sharp is going to get eight too. Downward strokes here. We're not strumming yet because again, we're building up, right? We're building up. We're in the valley right now of this song. And as we go up into the chorus, that's where things open up. Okay. And we can play a little bit louder. So here we go. F sharp five. Okay. Now from here, we're going to slide up to our A5. So what are the notes here? Your first finger is on A, fifth fret of the E string. Your third finger is on seventh fret of the A string. That note is E. So that's our one and that's our five. Your, third, your fourth finger here is going to be on the A note, seventh fret of the D string. Okay, so let's do this in context. All right, so here we go from the top intro. Verse. That's what's happening there. Let's do that one more time. Verse. F sharp five. Back to A five. Back to your B five. F sharp five. A five. F sharp five, A five, B five. Okay, so now I'm gonna do this without the commentary. Here we go, I'll play it a little slower. So here we go. Verse. You should be feeling that burn. <laughs> Work through it. You can do it. Very different than sounding like this without the palm mutes. The palm mutes will make that pre-chorus and that chorus just, ah, oh, just elevate so much more. It's really, really cool. Okay, so that's what's happening in the verse. So the verse is repeated four times. That B5 to F sharp 5 to A5 to F sharp 5 to A5, four times, okay? So the pre-chorus is gonna sound something like this. Or not something like, it's gonna sound like this. It opens up at the end. We release the palm mute, then start to strum fully. It's really, really great. So what's happening here, pre-chorus, starting at the G5, okay? So the G5, what are those notes? We have G and we have D. Here's how we play them. First finger going across all six strings here. Your first finger, that's our root, third fret of the E string, that's where G lives in standard tuning, okay? Your third finger, go ahead and place that on D. That is fifth fret of the A string, just like that, okay? Fourth finger, underneath that E string, fifth fret of the D string, that note is G. So one, five, one. G, C, G. And those are the only notes that we are hitting here. When we strum this chord, it's G5. Just those three, three strings, okay? So we have that same strumming pattern. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Then we go to A5. Remember, the one is A, the five is E, and then we have another A right here on that seventh fret of the D string. We go up there, same thing. Strum it eight times. One, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight. Okay. Then to F sharp five, we have our F sharp second fret of that E string, keeping that bar engaged. Remember the thumb, middle of the neck, squeezing through. Okay. And then we have our C sharp here, fourth fret of that A string, F sharp here, fourth fret of the D string. Okay. And we're only strumming those. Okay. Just like that. And the same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then back to G5. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So here we go. So it's a series of G5s, A5s, and an F sharp five. Here we go in context. I won't do any commentary here. Follow along the best you can. I'll slow it down just a little. to G5. All right. So now let's do this. We're going to go ahead and do our verse. All right. Our pre-chorus to where we're at right now. Okay. So here we go. Intro, the B5, that eighth strum, Give it a little bit more muscle, okay? So, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, like that. So here we go. I'm gonna play this three more times. G5. Okay. Good stuff, right? Good stuff. Again, if your hands feel a little tired, a good little uh, thing to kind of loosen everything up. I like to call it the one hand wave. Just like this. Start with the pinky into the palm, the rest of the fingers. Pinky, palm, third finger, second finger, first like this. And then just the fist, open hand fist. That's a good one too. I like that. And then that wave. So you got that wave and the fist. <laughs> Thanks, Carlos. High five. Giving you all a high five right now. <laughs> all right. This is great. Thank you all so much. Gosh, we got people from all around the world here. Let's give our hands a second to kind of get the blood flow back. Let's see here. Oh, we've got Ireland in the house. Thank you so much for being here. We got the Philippines in the house. Thank you so much, Mark, for being here. Huntington Beach, California, beautiful Huntington Beach. Plymouth, England, Michigan, Fullerton, California. Home of Fender Guitars, everybody, very cool. Dallas, Texas, Palm Beach, Florida. Oh, this is great. Wisconsin, Netherlands, Venice, Italy. This is great. Detroit. Got a lot of great singers here too. Got Alanis Morissette. That's one of Joni Mitchell. Absolutely. Oh, this is great. This is great. Robert Plant. Yes. Who are some other folks? Elvis. Love that. Chris Cornell. One of my favorites too. Oh, this is great. Susan Tedeschi. She's awesome. Love Susan Tedeschi. Annie Lennox. Jerry Cantrell. He's one of my favorites too. Oh, this is great. Mick Jagger. Steve Walsh from Kansas. This is wonderful. Great stuff, guys. Glad to have you checking in. All right. So now that we've done that pre-chorus, let's go ahead and now do the second half of it. So here it is. Here's the whole thing. Okay. 
So from that G5 where we left off, we're gonna do a quick little move, and I think it just, it adds such a nice little pep to that pre-chorus. We're gonna go from the F sharp five and slide up in one slick move. Notice how I'm only strumming it once. Moving up from the F sharp five to the G5. So we wanna keep that press engaged. We don't wanna lift up. We want it to be one swoop, one nice move. And then go back to strumming that G5 eight times. Okay, so something like this. Like that, okay? So keeping that pressed and engaged, you can do it. From there, we go to that A5. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. To our F sharp five. By the time we get to that F sharp five, in this part of the pre-chorus, strum it open. Because we're building up to that chorus. Chorus is just around the corner. What we are going to do next is we're gonna make this F sharp five, the F sharp five, okay, that we're coming from, into an F sharp seven. So here's how we do this. We've got the F sharp five here, like this. There we go. First finger on that second fret of the E string, your third finger on the C sharp, fourth fret of the A string, third finger is down on the F sharp, fourth fret of that D string, okay? So when we wanna make this an F sharp seven, we lift the pinky, we place our second finger, okay? So that's gonna go on the third fret of that G string. It's gonna sound like this and we're gonna strum all of those through the, 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 the G string. So E, A, D, G. We don't really need to play the whole chord. We don't need to do that. If you want to, it's fine, but I don't think you really need it. Because we really want that movement of that, okay? So the notes here, we have our F sharp here. Because remember, to make a seventh chord, we need a one, three, five, and a flat seven. So let's find them. We have our one of F sharp. Right here we have our five of C sharp. Right here, second fret of that D string, we have the E, that's the flat seven, okay? And then, right here, where that second finger is, that's the A sharp. Just like that, okay? And remember to open strum this. We don't need to palm mute anymore, okay? So here's the whole pre-chorus, nice and slow. Slide. F sharp five. Cool stuff, right? All right, so let's do this. Let's start from the verse. Okay, I'm gonna play it a little bit faster. Let's start it from the verse and then in through that pre-chorus and then we'll talk about the chorus and the cool stuff that's happening there. We'll go through the bridge and a really cool little guitar lick. And then we'll go in for my beginners. We're gonna do this whole thing with the capo or those of you who are curious how to play this with the capo and regular chords for the most part, we'll have one bar chord. We'll learn that too. And again, wanna thank the fine Folks at Fishman, I always get questions about the gear I'm using. There's a link in the video description where you can check out all the cool stuff Fishman is up to, including the info about the R Spectrum DI that I'm using and the Matrix Infinity Enhanced Pickups and all of that good stuff, so you can check it out there, but I wanted to give them a shout out. All right, so here we go from the top of the verse. I'm gonna play it a little faster. So here we go, top of the verse. bridge this pre-chorus slide That's what's happening there. Notice, downstrokes. We're not doing any crazy strumming here, all downstrokes. 
we're leading up to a really big chorus, which is where we're at now. So here's the chorus. Now, I am basing this off of the awesome, awesome, awesome NPR Tiny Desk um, acoustic version that she did back in 2022. And I love the video because it shows all the cool stuff that her guitar player is doing in the back. So it was really, really great to have a really go good visual um, analysis on what they're doing here. So with this, what we've got is that B5 and still downward strokes, we're not palm muting anymore. Now, we're gonna go from that B5 to this A major. Someone says back in 2022, 2011. Back in 2011 was the video, Joel. So yeah, the NPR Tiny, Tiny Desk 2011. Did I say 2022? It's been a long day, folks. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So the chorus B5 to our A. I noticed her guitar player was playing it like this with the thumb over here. So let me talk you through it. So the thumb, we're going to place that on the A note, okay? Fifth fret of that E string. Your third finger, or your first finger, place that on the fifth fret of the B string. That note is E. It's our five, okay? Second finger, reaching up to play the sixth fret of the G string. That is our third, that is the C sharp. Your third finger going up here to the seventh fret of that D string, that note is A. What you could also do is this. You could just play it like that. But you could also do this. Third finger goes up to the E note, seventh fret of that A string. Pinky finger goes and plays A on the seventh fret of that D string. We're playing all of the strings except the high E. Now, I know those of you, there, there are some of you who are like, I can't wrap my thumb around the neck. That's fine. If you want to play just a regular A bar chord here, you can do that too. Okay? So you can simply do this. For those of you who can't do the wrap, you could do it like this. Totally fine. Those of you who can do the wrap. That's how we would do it. Okay? So, the next chord is going to be G. I'm going to leave this option for you guys too. Those of you, if you can wrap the thumb around the, the, the E string and around the neck, Awesome. You're gonna go back a whole step to G. Remember G, B, D, our one, three, five. We have G here, that's what our thumb is playing. Our third finger is playing D, that's gonna be the five. Your pinky finger is playing the other G on that fifth fret of the D string. Your second finger is playing B, that is our third, fourth fret of that G string. First finger is playing D, third fret B string. Okay? So that's if you want to wrap it. Now, if you can't, do a regular old bar chord G major. Just remember to keep that thumb back of the neck. I don't want to see it up here. All right? Yes, Kev, exactly. The Jimmy, the Jimi Hendrix, John Frusciante, John Mayer style. Exactly. They're fun. They sound really cool. So that's going to be that chorus, okay? So we've got this, B5. Five. A. G. And back to A. Okay, I'm going to do that again nice and slow without the commentary. Here's the chorus.
right into verse two, palm muting. Okay, so let's put that in context. What I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna now start from the pre-chorus, into the chorus, and then into one pass of the verse, verse two. All right, so here we go. From the top of the pre-chorus, here we go, G5. Here's one pass of that chorus with the bar chords, okay? For those of you who can't wrap your thumb, here's what that would sound and look like. Okay, so that's that chorus there. So, two different options wherever you're at in your guitar playing journey, giving you those options. Now, we have our bridge. That's where they do the claps. So that's what's happening there. Now, if we wanted to emulate that with guitar and not clap, just go ahead and mute it here with your chord hand, your fretted hand, and just hit Or if you want to keep it simple, just like that. And then an occasional B5. Get rhythmic with it. Have fun. Just like that. Again. Different variations, just planting the seeds, as you guys know with these lessons. So have fun with that part. That acapella bit gives you a little bit of wiggle room to do some really cool stuff. Now, what's happening there? After we have that, there's this really cool lick that the guitar player does on the NPR 2011 version. Okay. And it goes a little something like this. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys how to play that. Again, you can do different variations on it. It's a really cool little, little line in, in, in B. So, let me show you how to play it. So we're gonna get these first two fingers here. I'm going to slide. It's gonna be a half step movement. My first finger, place it first on the ninth fret of that B string, okay? And we're gonna get our second finger here, placing that on the 10th fret of the D string, okay? So that's gonna be an F and then you're gonna slide it up a half step. So where you should end this, your first finger should now be on the 10th fret of the B string, that note is A, and then your second finger should be on the 11th fret of the G string, that note is F sharp. Just like that. Now, I am choosing to hybrid pick this because that's what I like to do when I play. So, could you just strum it with a pick, you could. I feel like I have a little bit more control when I hybrid pick this. So what I do is I put the pick plucking downwards on the G string. My second finger on my picking hand is plucking upwards on the B string. It's a slight pinch, not nothing too aggressive, just a slight pinch, just like that, okay? So I will take out the commentary, here we go. We want it to be a quick, like, like just like a little wink, like that, okay? From there, get your first finger placing it on the ninth fret of the G string, okay? That's our E note. 
sliding it back to the seventh fret of the G string, that note is D, landing on B ninth fret of the D string. So the whole thing will sound like this. And you can do it really quick, it has like a nice cool little attitude. Now, if you wanted to maybe change it up a little bit and hit that B note at the end twice, good for you, do it. Even give it a little bit of attitude, maybe on that D note, kind of give it a little bit of a, little bit of a quarter bend. That works too. So again, leaving that up to you, it's a cool little lick. So we then get to the bridge. So the bridge here, okay, is gonna be a B minor, or sorry, B5. Let it ring, A. G, let it ring. Back to A, let it ring. B5, let it ring. To A. Then once we get to that G, back to our regular strumming, then back to A, okay? So I'm gonna do that again nice and slowly here without the commentary. G chord. And then we go into our chorus and out, okay? So what I'm going to do here, I'm gonna do that bridge with those whole notes, let them ring, okay? And then into a final chorus and out, all right? So here's how that's gonna sound, follow along. Hard stop on that B5 at the end. So just like that. So we're gonna do here, I'm gonna do an abridged version of the entire song this way. Then for the rest of the lesson for my beginners or, or, or folks who just don't wanna play bar chords, I'm gonna do a capoed version of this too, okay? So here we go from the top. Here, here it is. Forget to palm mute. Pre chorus.
So there it is. Super, super fun to play. Again, really, really fun one. So let's go ahead and do this. So now for the next 20 minutes, what we're gonna do is we're gonna learn this entire song. But we're gonna learn it capoed, all right? So my beginners, I hope you're watching those bar chords and realizing they're really not too bad. Don't be too scared of them. Something to work up to here, all right? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna place, if you got a capo, let's go ahead and put it on the second fret, okay? And make sure it's not crooked, okay? I'm not, it looks like it's right on top. I know the angle of this camera. It looks like I'm right on top. I am just right next to it, okay? So I like to get as close to the fret as I can. Some people like to go right on top of it. Some people like to move over a little bit. I like to be just right next to it, okay? So that's what's happening there. So again, this is a live Q&A, guys. So if you guys have questions, we'd absolutely love to answer them. And again, if you guys are curious about the gear that I'm using, there's a link in the video description so you could check out all the cool stuff Fishman is up to. Sean, better late than never. Don't worry, but we're happy you're here. Thanks for tuning in, Sean. Thanks for tuning in. All right, so. Someone's asking what kind of guitar this is. This is a Martin Triple O 17 E in black smoke. And I absolutely, I, I absolutely love it. I've had a lot of people say yours looks shiny. This is a matte finish, but I play this thing so much. It's, it's gotten shiny. But yeah, thanks to, the, thanks to the fine folks at Martin. This is a beautiful, they make beautiful guitars. And I am so, so happy to own this one. Okay, so let's go ahead and now look at this. Capoed. Say you're playing this with someone else and someone wants to do the bar chords, right? But you want to do something different. So this is, I'm giving you this option here to play this song capo too, so that you and the other guitar player that you're playing with are playing in two different realms of the instrument, okay? And at the end of the day, it's going to make the song sound even better. So here it is here. And the chords that we're going to be dealing with are going to be A minor, E minor, F, and G, and there's gonna be an E7 in there too, okay? And by E minor, we could play an E5 as well, like we've been doing in the past, okay, moments ago. All right, so here's how it would sound. Again, I'm gonna do this abridged, okay? We already know the, the formula of the song. We've gone through all of the parts, so this will be a bit more abridged, but again, all the same chords, so. All right, so let's go ahead and do this from the top. Again, intro. That's what's happening here. Someone's asking what brand of capo is very streamlined. This is a Daddario or Daddario, however you guys say it. Um, it's a, it's a Daddario capo. Really, really great. And yes, I agree. It is it is very streamlined. It's got the little little knob in the back to uh, tighten and loosen, which is wonderful. Uh, but yeah, it's really streamlined. I like these. When I'm playing live, I like the ones that clip because you're not always going to play with a capo. So when I play live. I like to have a clip one and then I just put it onto the headstock. Um, yeah, great question though. Uh, great, great question. Yeah, so, so check it out. I, I like it. I like it a lot. It's a good capo. All right, so for the intro, we're gonna do here is an A minor. But as you notice, I didn't play the whole chord, right? I just played the A string, D string, G string, and I am still palm muting. Okay? So even though I'm not playing the C note, because if I was, then 
would have to call it an A minor chord, so I'm technically playing an A5. Like that. But if you want to keep this there for a, a little insurance and you want it to sound a little more minor-y, totally cool. Again, I plant the seeds, folks. I'm your guitar playing mentor here. All right, so palm muting still. We're strumming it the same way. We're just playing in a different spot, okay? So the verse here, the verse is, so it's gonna be that A minor, but try not to play that C. A, D, G string only, okay? So, and then it would go to an E minor shape. But we're only going to play the E, B, E, right? So it would be an E5, okay? Then we're going to do G. Now for this G chord, I'm not playing the whole thing. I'm playing the E string, the A string, the D string, and the G string, okay? So the G, B, G, or D, G. there and then back to that E5 to that G5 okay so let's go ahead and do that nice and slowly here from the top intro and verse It's a palm mute, super important. So again, a little bit of a rest from those bar chords, right? I was even feeling it myself. So, um, ooh, we're getting good comments about the guitar. Is there a bit of reverb? There's a touch, just a touch of reverb. Big shout out to my my buddy Ryan over at, at, at Fishman, who sound checks me and does just, the, just a killer job getting the best tones out of this guitar. But yeah, as far as what I'm going through, the R Spectrum DI folks by Fishman, that's what I'm going through right now. Um, I know I say this every lesson, but it is so true. I don't do an acoustic gig without that pedal. I just love it. So it is the R Spectrum DI. Uh, that's what you're hearing, and that's going through logic out to all you fine folks. Um, so yeah, rack. Rack him just a just a touch, just a touch, and yes, we are in uh, we are in standard tuning as well. Thank you very much. Glad glad the tones are coming through again. I I think that pedal just does such a killer job allowing the instrument to sound as it should, and it is truly one of the most important important uh, bits uh, on on my guitar rig, for sure, for sure. Yes, Robert, we are in standard tuning. Yep, standard tuning capo two. All right, so. Here we go from the top. We're gonna do intro and a verse. And don't forget to palm mute, nice and light. Same storming pattern. Now we get to the pre-chorus. The pre-chorus is gonna be F major, G major, E5 to F major, okay? So it's gonna sound something like this. Just like that. That sneaky E7 in there, let's talk about it. Uh, Neo Lux is asking, do you have any advice for a good palm mute? Use this part of the hand here, that heel of the hand, that is gonna be perpendicular with this saddle here. Now, I don't want you on top of it, I want you just next to it. So see how the saddle's there and my hand's just in front of it? You don't wanna press. You just want to lightly place it on top, let it chill, okay? And by strumming it, nice light strum, I like to use a little bit of a, um, my preference in picks is between 0.76 to 0.88. 
Me personally, I don't like to get any lighter or heavier than that range of pick. Um, I'm using a 0.76 today for this but nice and light again as i always mention let the pick do the work for you but nice and light we do not want to press down when we're palm muting really good question thank you for that okay so let's do that pre-chorus again f major bar chord remember i don't want the thumb up here right thumb in the middle of the neck we have f here at that first fret in accordance with the capo okay the f then we have the c here where our third finger is third fret of that A string. Your fourth finger is underneath it playing yet another F, okay? Third fret of that D string. And then we have your second finger playing A, second fret of the G string, strum everything. Okay, so you can choose to strum everything if you wanna keep it to those five chords. Just worry about strumming the strings on the E, A, and D. Here we go. We can choose to move that up to play G as a power chord or play it there, right? We're trying to avoid some of those bar chords for my beginners, okay? As we work up to those power chords, there's other ways to play them, okay? To our E5, back to F. So how we're going to do, remember how I did that slide a couple moments ago in the, in the other version of this. I'm just lifting up that first finger and then bringing it back down to that F. Okay, so I'll play that again in context. Lift. I'll do that again. Good little skip in the song it's great so then the next part of this is going to be f g to that e5 to the e7 it's going to sound like this and that's where we release the palm mute right Good stuff. So that E7, your first finger is going to go on the first fret of that G string. That's going to be the G sharp. Your second finger is going on B, second fret of the A string. Strum everything. Why not? Okay. So that's what's happening there. Let's give it context going through that pre-chorus again. Palm muted. get into that chorus. I think the A minor kind of sounds cool here. And then the full G major chord. Then the full F bar chord. Back to G. All right. So A minor G F G. That's the chorus. Let's play it. I'm going to do it a little slower here. So let's give it context here. I'm seeing some great questions come in. I'm going to answer a few of those in a second. Let's do a pre-chorus chorus and I'll take some of your questions. So here we go. Pre-chorus. After this, we have we go immediately into verse two, then we go into a pre-chorus, and then we go into a chorus. Then we have that bridge. Remember the part that da, 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 with the claps. So what you could do there, have your A minor here. Da, 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 
and then give it a good strum. Again, I encourage you guys to listen to the NPR Tiny Desk from 2011. Have a listen to that and the way they play it. It's just great. It's keys, it's acoustic guitar, and it's vocals, and it's so damn good. It's great. So uh, let's see here. Let's go ahead. Actually, what I'll do here is I will show you the guitar riff in this capoed position, and then I will go ahead and answer answer some questions, and then we'll call it a day, folks. It's been so great. Again, if you guys are enjoying these lessons, don't forget to like the video. That helps the algorithm. And to subscribe to the channel, because it helps the cause. And I thank you all so much. This is, this is so great. So let's go ahead and look at the riff. See, all of those series of notes, they don't just live here. You can play them in other places too. Okay, so I'm gonna give my beginners maybe one that's a little bit more friendly towards the top of the headstock, all right? So, let's go ahead and do it this way. Get your first finger placing it on the second fret of the E string, that's F sharp, and you're gonna get your third finger here, okay, that is going to be on the fourth fret, respectively, because we have the capo here of that B string. We're still going to hybrid pick this, okay? So, half step up, slide. We're going from the second and fourth fret to the third and fifth, just like that, so you can do it. But definitely hybrid pick it, it's good for you. Okay? Then your first finger is gonna go on the third fret of the B string, that note is would be D, okay, respectively. Sliding that back to the first fret of that B string. And then getting that second finger on the second fret of the G string, respectively because of the capo. Okay, so here we go, whole thing, I'll play it a little slow. Oh, let's do that again. Okay. So that's that little riff right there. So what I'll do here, I'll go through this abridged, the parts that we know, intro, verse, pre-chorus, chorus, in this capoed position, then I'll take some of your questions and we will call it a day. So here we go. Intro. Pre-chorus. Just like that, it's good, good stuff. All right, so for the last few minutes here, I do wanna take some of your questions because I saw some really good ones. Aw, uh, thank you for making these great tutorials. You're very, very welcome. It's always an honor, it's always an honor. Glad glad they're helping you guys play guitar. That's, that's the main thing. And again, I wanna say this, I love how kind everyone is on, in the comment board, you guys are so uplifting to one another and helpful. And I love when someone has a question about a capo stuff and I can't get to the question right away that someone chimes in and lets them know so that they can play along with us. Know that I see that and I appreciate that. And I'm really, really thankful for all the really good positive energy that's here. So thank you all so much for that. Um, Dwayne is asking any advice on getting my fingers to stretch on the plush video. That's a fun one. That was a fun one to teach. Um, uh, you know the part I'm talking about where the pinky stretches over to the fifth. Um, having, a <laughs> having a hard time stretching my pinky. Any advice? So Dwayne, what I would say, the spider, I love. It's a very basic warm up, but it's one that I do every day. I even do it before I go live on these lessons. But it's a really good... We're going chromatically, right? Every And half steps. 
and we would go forwards and backwards here. Notice how I'm doing alternate picking, top, bottom, top, bottom. Also, your placement of thumb is crucial. I would say you're probably having a little bit of a hard time because perhaps your thumb is up a little high. So if you have your thumb at the middle of the neck, it is going to allow the stretch. So I'll show you what I mean. So my thumb is in, in its proper position. I am able to stretch pretty decently. Now, notice when my thumb comes up, how my hand begins to shrink. So when the thumb is up too high, we can't get a really beautiful open stretch. So I would say watch your thumb placement there. Do the spider exercise. Man, is it helpful. It's even better if you do it with a metronome. So that's my advice to you, Dwayne. Great question, great question. Um, yeah, this is, this is such a blast. I thank you all so much. Next week is going to be pre-recorded because I will be playing a show here in LA, April 22nd. I'm going to be opening for Billy Bob Thornton and the Box, Box Masters here in LA. So if you guys are in town next week, next Friday, come and hang out with me at the Mint. Um, the ticket link is on my website, AngelaPatrilliMusic.com. So you can, uh, you can check it out. And yeah, would love, would love to meet you. If you come out to the show, would love to meet you. I'll be playing some shows in Texas uh, this May. And then I will be back in LA playing some shows. And it's gonna, be, it's gonna be a lot of fun. So yeah, always, as always, wishing you guys so much success. You got two different versions of this song today in one lesson. So as always, wishing you much success. I hope, I hope this goes, this goes great for you. It's a super fun one to play. I think Adele is just such an awesome, awesome artist, musician, songwriter. So it's all, it, it's a pleasure teaching one of her songs to you guys today. So hope you enjoy it. Everybody take good care and I will see you soon.